Hello everyone, my name is Mickey Benes with IBWave Solutions. The purpose of this session is to educate the users how to use IBWave Design. I will start out by doing a project from scratch and going through the experience of importing an AutoCAD file and running different prediction maps. After that, we will go over some settings uh, on project properties to see what kind of settings you can set before you start designing. So first, I will go ahead and start a project from scratch. So I'm clicking on new project. This will give me a chance to enter my project name. I will go ahead and put my project name. Demo project. On the left side are all the different properties that you can set for your project. We will go over a few of them uh, later on when we finish the design from scratch. From here I will click on OK. And the first page that opens up is the design plan page. Here you can start designing directly on your design plan page or you can add floor plans or layout plans. I will go ahead and add a layout plan. I'm going to go to plans, new layout plan and it will give me a chance here to enter my floor name. So I'm going to put floor one and their image file. This is where you can actually upload your image or PDF file and the walls file. This is where you can actually upload your AutoCAD file. So I'll go ahead and click on the walls file and upload an AutoCAD file. Once you click OK, all the layers associated with your AutoCAD file will open up here. So you can import all the layers if you want or you can clear these layers and import only the ones you want. So we will go ahead and uh, choose few layers from here. I'm going to click for example on my door so I want to import my doors. Next I will choose my outside walls so I want to import my outside walls and I will add my inside walls to that. So we will go ahead and import these three layers for now. Once we click import the software will ask us to specify different materials for each layer. So for my doors I will select metal and notice here you have all the transmission uh, losses and so on for uh, the metal and those will be taken into consideration when running uh, your maps and notice here it gives it this metal color here so I will click OK. Uh, for my next layer my outside walls I'm gonna select concrete heavy and for my inside walls I can do plaster drywall. Notice that you can always change your color directly here so you can pick any wall color you want. So uh, once you click OK, uh, the software will ask you if you want to change the height above the floor. Uh, so it's set at 3 meters by default. I'm going to leave it by default at 3 meter meters and I'm going to say OK to all layers. So once you do that, automatically your AutoCAD file is imported into your floor plan. And notice here, if we click on our outside wall, it will tell us that it's concrete heavy. And if we click on the inside wall, it will tell us that it's plaster drywall. We'll try clicking on our doors just to make sure we have metal for the doors. So this is exactly what we set when we imported the layers. The first thing I'd like to do here is to scale my project or my uh, floor plan. So I'm going to click on the ruler and I'm going to drop the ruler where I want it to be. So let's say here, I'm going to click on my ruler and I'm going to give it a value, 50 meters, set horizontal and vertical. OK, and just like that, I have scaled my floor plan now. So from here, I can start designing directly. I'm going to go ahead and select a few components. I'm going to pick a uh, couple of omnidirectional antennas, so I'll click on antenna. Here I can browse by all the different antenna manufacturers. So for my case here, I will go ahead and select generic, and I'm going to select a generic omnidirectional antenna. On the right side here, I have the proper antenna properties, and if I click OK, my antenna will be right underneath my cursor, and I can drop it where I want it to be. So I can, for example, put it here. I can put another antenna here. So now I have created both antennas and I would need a splitter connected to both antennas. So I will click on splitter. And again, here you can browse by all the different manufacturers. So in my case, I will go ahead and select generic, two-way splitter. And once I click OK, the splitter is right underneath my cursor. I can drop it here. 
and next what I want to do is I want to uh, <coughs> attach cables between my components so I'll click on cable and select this cable and I can just point on my antenna click drag to my splitter click again and just like that the connection is made I can do the same thing here again so once my connection has been made I can play with my cables I can uh, put them the way I want them to be I can arrange this cable here as well so once I did that basically this is my design and let's say I want to go ahead and import another floor I can do it using the same way I did floor one or I can use this option duplicate plan so when you do duplicate the plan you can give it a name so I'm gonna put floor 2 for example and once you click OK automatically the floor plan will be duplicated with the exact same scale exact same components and AutoCAD file so as you see now we have floor 1 and floor 2 identical so I will go to my design plan and notice all components you add are automatically uh, added into the design plan they come up on your design plan so I will go ahead and differentiate between floor 1 and floor 2 components so I'm gonna put my floor 1 components on top floor 2 components on the bottom and from here I can add my system so I'm gonna click on add the system here I can pick my region I'm gonna do Europe for example my band you can choose from all the different bands available and in my case I will pick 2100 UNTS technology you can choose a different technologies so I will do HSPA for now and you have four different system sources just a quick note here the first two of air measured RSSI and of air theoretical pad those are used when the in-building design is part of the macro site and in that case a donor antenna will be needed at the rooftop to actually import signal inside the building the second two are used when there is a dedicated base station providing coverage to the building so in my case I will do base station sector and if I click on next here I can specify whether I want my propagation calculations to be based on power per channel pilot per seepage or overhead power I will do pilot per seepage here the, it comes up with uh, some default values and uh, you can change them or keep them as you like once you go next here you can put your uh, base station output power so I'm gonna put 43 for example you can put your noise figure I'm gonna select a value 5 dB and once you click finish automatically you have your base station on, underneath your cursor I'm gonna drop it here so notice now we have a base station we have components in floor 1 and 2 and I want to connect my base station to both my floors so I would need to split the power I can create a splitter like I did before or I can use the clone stamp tool button and I can clone just about any component so I'm gonna go ahead and clone my splitter and I can use the safe splitter here to make the connection I can also clone my cable and make basically the connection as you see it is very easy to make the connections I did not put this connection straight forward so I will reclone this cable and remake this connection so once all the connections have been made the first thing I want to do is go to my data, data view filter tab and here I can display my calculations so I can display my power per channel my composite power absolute gain and loss pilot power CDMA overhead MSRSSI MS signal range so I can display all my calculations or hide them if I want to so I can just uncheck the boxes and easily hide my calculations uh, for power per channel I can have it displayed at the internal level only I can check this box here and automatically I have the output power at the antennas only so notice I have added a base station sector and a splitter I did not assign them to any floor so from here I want to go ahead and assign them to floor one assuming that our equipment room is located on floor one so we'll do floor one automatically they appear here on my layout plan so I'm gonna assume again that my equipment room is located here I'm gonna put my base station there 
I'm gonna drag my splitter to my equipment room again and I'm gonna arrange the cable here how I want it to be so arranging my cable uh, next here this is where we call a via and this is the connection between floor 1 and floor 2 so if I right click on it and do show other end it will take me to the via on floor 2 and this is basically what the software uses to calculate the vertical cables between the floors so I will bring my via next to my splitter going back to floor 1 I will bring my via next to my splitter here again so now uh, once I'm done with the design I can display my calculations here on my layout plan as well I can display my uh, power per channel at the antennas uh, here and I can also display my cable lengths so here as you see since my floor plan is scaled uh, my cable lengths automatically appear here so if I click on my antenna and move it further away or I can uh, move it the other direction you see that the cable lengths are updated automatically so everything basically is automated in IB with design and easy to achieve so now I want to go ahead and create a, an output map and run predictions but before I do that I want to specify my uh, prediction area so to do that you can draw a horizontal surface so I will draw a horizon, horizontal surface I can use this snap at the corner tool I can basically draw a horizontal surface around my floor plan uh, basically to run my predictions indoor only so that none of uh, my signal uh, leaks outside my floor plan and it is easy you just cover your floor plan with your horizontal surface and as you see uh, it snaps at all the corners uh, very easy so finishing this horizontal surface here once I am done I can click on it right click and select a set as a prediction area so once I do that now if I run predictions they will run indoor only and from here I can add the different output maps if I click on the plus button uh, under configuration you can uh, display or choose the type of configuration you want so I'm gonna do signal strength I can give it a name here signal strength map under specific here this is uh, where you can uh, set your propagation model dominant path or cost empirical 231 dominant path is set by default so I can keep it there by default under filters this is where you can specify actually the floors where you want to run your predictions on so I can keep all my floors selected under color schemes this is where you can customize your legend and uh, again the colors that are displayed with the predictions so going back to general I will just click OK my map is created here and to run the map you can simply right click on it and do a run on current plan so once your map has finished running you can close this box and you can check the box here automatically your signal strength is displayed inside your floor plan you can use the signal probe uh, tool here once you check it you can just drag your cursor uh, anywhere inside your floor plan and you can read the signal strength value at just about any point inside your floor plan so as you see as I move my cursor the signal strength is changing so uh, from here basically I can go draw my legends and I can put my legend right next to my floor plan here this will help me actually read my colors better so from here what I can do again is I can go ahead and create other maps if I click on the plus button here again you can choose from all the different maps you want uh, best server which will show you the coverage for each antenna interpolation uh, maps max achievable data rate it's an IR map, soft handoff maps to see where soft handoff occurs when you enter the building, LTE maps, and so on. So I will go ahead and select max achievable data rate to view the data rate inside my floor plan. So I'm going to name it max achievable data rate. And if I go to the specific tab, here you have the option to consider outdoor signals or not. So I will not consider outdoors in my case. And I will click OK. Once you do that, I can just right click on my map 
and run it on my current plan. So once my map has finished running, all I can do is check the map box here. And here you will see on your legends uh, what areas on the floor have what data rate. So we see that most of our floor has 7.2 megabytes per second. So that's actually the data rate inside my floor. Some areas here are weaker with 1.2 megabytes per second. So as you see, this is your data rate map. And if you want to create other maps, you can just basically choose the map you want, add it, and then right click on it and run it on the current plan. So from here, what I want to do is I want to show you some uh, few tools. So if I go back and select my signal strength map here, I want to show you that you have the option to view your current uh, floor on 3D, or you can also view your current building on 3D using this building button here. So I'm going to go ahead and select my floor on 3D. This will pull up your floor plan here on 3D. You can view or hide certain layers, so I can view or hide my predictions. I can view or hide my wireframe to see how the walls were modeled on IB with design. And if you choose the picture you want, you can actually export it as an image and to be displayed on a PowerPoint slide if you wish. So uh, next, what I want to do before we go back to the design plan. So here we have the option to organize the, the design plan tab. And to do that, you actually go to plans and select design plan organizer. So I'm going to give it a name. Once you click OK, you have to add the number of regions depending on how many floors you have. So in my case, I have two floors. I'm going to select two regions. I'm going to associate uh, a floor to each region. So we have floor two on top, floor one on the bottom. And here you can choose uh, different colors for your design plan organizer. So just to differentiate between the floors, once you do that, you can click OK, and this is your design plan organizer. You can put it where you want. You can also right click on it, unlock it, so that way it won't move. Uh, once you do that, notice that we have an option here. If you right click, uh, you can do organize uh, all floors. So if you do that, automatically, components located in floor 2, they will appear under floor 2. Components located on uh, floor 1, they will come up and appear in floor 1. You can actually uh, drag your components and play with this how you want it to be. So it is up to you how you want it to be. And once you are happy with your design or the way it looks, you can keep it uh, how you want it to be. So going back to floor one. Uh, now what I want to do is I want to run quickly through the different properties that you can set. So project properties can be accessible from this uh, shortcut here. So if I click on it, those are my project properties. You have the option to post or predate your project here. Uh, next, under general, this is where you can set your text appearance, color, font, and so on. And notice, once you go through all the project properties, you don't have to do it every time before you start designing. You can do it once, and you can save those uh, properties as a template. So once you do that, you can reuse that template anytime you want. Under company info, this is where you can actually upload your uh, company logo, company name here, and your designer name. The company logo and so on will be displayed on the title block in your design plan tab. Uh, under units, this is where you can choose from all metric or all imperial units or a combination of both <coughs> should you want to. Under part ID, this is where you can basically customize the appearance of your part ID. Under security, this is where you can set a few passwords, a password to open, password to modify, and password to view cost information. So in case you are emailing your file to someone, you don't want him to see cost information of the project, you can simply set a password here. Under calculations, this is where you can set few uh, parameters to be displayed per technology. So for example, under CDMA, WCDMA, this is where you can set your default propagation calculations. And once you do that, you can also change the values uh, that you have here, or you can keep them as default. Uh, same parameters are available for LTE and YMAX. Next, what we have is capacity analysis. And this is a very big feature in IB Wave Design. This is where you can actually set the subscriber types for every technology. 
and then you can run a map on IB with design that will show you the total downlink your system can support. So we'll give you an example here. Uh, well, let's take uh, CDMA as an example. So from here you can, uh, from history, the operator will tell you in this venue, uh, you're going to see 20 people using emails, 20 using web browsing, 20 video conferencing and voice and so on. So you can put all the different values and they have to all adapt to 100. And once you do that, you can run uh, your capacity analysis report and then it will show you the Toro downlink throughput your system can support. So what the software does is it places users randomly inside your floor until it fills up and then it will tell you your maximum capacity. Under mobile signal, uh, you can use either the path loss exponent or the free path loss. And here you can set your expected MS range and expected MS RSSI range. And this is mainly for your antenna control. So next, what I will do is I will go to prediction uh, under advanced. This is where you can set the number of floors to be predicted. So next again, under network optimization, this is where you can uh, select your technology. Uh, let's do HSPA for now. And on the right side, you have the mobile station parameters. And these will allow you to set the mobile station transmit power antenna gains, receiver noise, and additional loss. Under service configuration, this is where you can add the different surfaces and specify the requirements per service, like the downlink required power and SNIR, which are taken into consideration when running a data rate map. So below that here, I will go to propagation models. So we have the dominant path, and you have all the different values displayed here line of sight exponent, obstructed line of sight, and so on. You can change those values if you want. You also have the cost empirical 231. You can modify uh, the different bands as well if you want. And then you have your path loss exponent and your free path loss. For example, under the free path loss, here you have your body, fading, and building materials. Uh, you can take that into consideration when running your uh, prediction maps. You can change these values should you want to. So uh, again, once you have finished uh, setting all your project parameters, you can go to general and you can save them as a template. So uh, if I go ahead and click cancel here and go to tools, options, here you will see that some other parameters that you can specify. So for example, under general, this is where you can choose your default region when adding a system. Uh, you can choose your connector colors and so on. Uh, under, uh, for example, performance, this is where you can specify the number of cores to be used for predictions. Uh, under unity configuration, this is where you can actually set your unity configuration. So in case you have a unity account and you want to do that, you simply click on add and you will provide a name here. Let's say your company name and then you can put your URL and username and password. Those will be provided to you by IB Wave. By IB Wave. So uh, once you put those here and click OK, automatically your, co your connection will appear here. You can set it by default and uh, automatically your IB web design is connected to Unity. In case you want to save a file to Unity, you go to Project, Save to Unity. It takes a minute uh, or few seconds here for it to uh, find the connection to Unity. So once that's done, you can save your project as a new project, as a template and so on. And you simply click on save. Once you do that, you will have this Unity project properties window. And here the only fields that are uh, required or mandatory are the bold ones, project, design name, folder, the folder that uh, actually your project is going to go to in Unity, and uh, if you want to lock your project or not. So uh, all other fields are optional, but we do recommend that you fill all of them. Once you fill all these fields, this is what Unity actually uses to display data mining uh, uh, regarding your projects. And once you uh, fill these fields, you simply click OK and you can save the project directly into Unity. Uh, 
something else here if you go under plans info this is where you can arrange your floors uh, the order of your floor so you can simply click on your floor and you can drag it and put it somewhere else so you want these floors to be laid out the exact way they are in real life and this what helps the software calculate the vertical cable lengths uh, between the floors uh, if i right click on building and i do show properties this is where you can input your uh, google earth coordinates so that way uh, when you save your file into unity uh, you can open your file directly on google earth in the exact location where your building is located so to do this to fill the coordinates uh, from google earth uh, you can actually let me show you how to do that if i cancel here uh, you click on the map uh, instead of uh, specifying a value you can do set geolocation from kml and then you can import your google um, uh, your google file so you can open google and find the building uh, that you want to import create a path and save that path under kml and then uh, you can import it from here and then directly ib wave design uh, will pull those coordinates from google earth so next what i want to do is i will go ahead and navigate to a different file and i want to talk to you about the collection module so i will go ahead and navigate to another file here and i'm going to disable my prediction and here if i zoom a little bit more you will see the measurements that were uh, taken on site and imported in ib with design and this is what it looks like exactly so to import your measurements you simply go to your survey data tab you click on the plus sign here and here you can import your dot csv or and uh, map info coordinates that tab file and once you, you do that you click ok automatically your uh, measurements will be displayed on IB web design uh, there are there are few tools or a number of tools that we support the import from like Thames uh, Nemo Swissqual and so on uh, a list of them so uh, if you are using one of those measurement tools you can uh, simply import the .csv and map info coordinates file into IB web design and this will display your measurements inside the floor plan in the exact order they were taken then you can run your prediction and once you do that you will see the prediction versus measured data and you can also draw a report generate a report that will show you more details on the prediction versus measured data so the collection module is very simple exactly uh, like we showed here so i will go back and navigate back to uh, our previous document from here what i want to talk about is the reports reports are <coughs> automated and they eliminate tedious tasks you can generate reports by using the shortcuts here or from the reports menu so i want to go ahead and generate a couple of reports here to show, to give you an idea so i'm going to do the cost detail report i'm going to click on it and here you have the option to do or select one report or all you can add any additional cost here so i can add for ex for example site survey cost and let's do quantity one and the cost let's do fifty dollars for example and we want to apply it to uh, probably construction so this is an additional cost that we have set so once i click ok here automatically my report is generated and this is my cost detail report it will display my uh, type of components antenna cable connector and splitter uh, manufacturers models description and those are the components to use uh, in this project from scratch that we did here you may see zeros just because different customers have access to different prices and we like to keep it neutral for uh, the demo here you will see the uh, additional cost we have specified site survey at fifty dollars and that is calculated uh, as well in there so once you view your cost detail report you can export it to either PDF, Excel, Word document, PowerPoint, and so on, uh, however you want. And let me go ahead and close this. Uh, many other reports are available. I can do the link budget report, for example. I can select one system, or if we have more than one system, I can select all of them if I want. Uh, and once I click OK, automatically my report is generated and it will show me all the gains and losses associated with my components. So as you see here, I have my components and I have all the gains 
a losses associated with my components and they are all displayed here uh, this report you can also like all other reports export to the format you wish so i will go ahead and close my report the final point i want to discuss is the database so our database is rich with over 7000 components i will go ahead and click on tools database editor uh, pretty much all the components that you will need for your designs will be available in our database uh, so we'll click OK here. It takes a few seconds for it to open as uh, it is large. Uh, so the database, if you if there are any components that you don't find in the database, you can add it. It is uh, uh, very easy to add components into the database and we can show you and help you and guide you through as well. Uh, so this is your database, over 7000 components displayed. You can filter by the type or manufacturer or depending on what you want. So you can filter here with uh, for the type of component you want. And here you have the option to add a new uh, component to the database. You can click on a component and modify it. You can duplicate the component. You can delete it. And you also have the option to select approved or not approved. So if I do approved or not approved, as you see, uh, this turns to red here and if I prove it it turns to green and this is basically for management to uh, approve certain parts to be used by the engineers and that way uh, they can ensure consistency while designing and that everyone is using the same parts so this is our component database and go ahead and close it for now uh, the uh, last thing again I want to mention here is your component browser you can click on your component browser and let's say I am looking for uh, specific components. I can just type what I want to type in here. Uh, so I can type, for example, Andrew and it will pull all the Andrew components here. I can search through the descriptions here very easy. I can look through uh, all the antennas, BDAs, cables and, and so on that uh, this manufacturer produces. Or I can here search by just about anything I want and I can find my component. Once I want this component, I can simply click on it and uh, it opens the properties for it and I can just click OK and use it. So this pretty much brings us to the end of this session. I hope the session was very helpful for anyone. And you can also uh, or always contact us to sales at ibwave.com or support at ibwave.com and we will definitely provide the support uh, you need.